Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Omar with Patterson Autos, and this is Mazda's new CX-70. No, this isn't the first time that I've shown you the CX-70. The first time that we shot a video, we actually did it at Mazda's research and development facility. But some of you didn't like that color, and so I figured I'll bring something else up for a debate. This is my personal favorite, Zircon Sand. And in that video, I mentioned that Mazda's research and development facility is actually where the Miata was born. And this is my favorite SUV right now because it is the most Miata-like. I said that about the CX-90, but this is even more so because it loses that very back seat. It has a long wheelbase, a low center of gravity, and a front double wishbone suspension just like the Miata and your favorite Porsche. Now, I'm not gonna do a full feature breakdown in this car because we did it in the last video, but I do want to address one thing. In the last video, some of you complained that Mazda took the lazy route by leaving cup holders in the back from the CX-90. It's really a plus in my book. For my tailgate test, it's the icing on the cake. And again, if you haven't watched that video yet, you really should. If you've already watched it, you should watch it again. Go ahead and pause this, I'll wait. Hey, welcome back. Do you think I should shave my mustache? Anyway, if you were paying attention, you may have noticed that on the passenger side back here, there's a 150 watt outlet. That car was an inline six. This is a plug-in hybrid variant, which is gonna give you a lot more juice. So on the driver's side, you have a 1500 watt power outlet. This car could charge itself just about. I'm joking, of course, but that is a feature while you're driving. A little bit more back here, and don't forget that you can slide your seats forward. for those other odds and ends. Obviously the plug-in hybrid gives you a lot more electric power than the inline six, but the inline six has that inline six, which is super smooth. And really even on the non S model of the inline six, you're gonna have plenty of get up and go. I would probably only choose it for the towing capacity if you need to tow those 5,000 pounds. But again, there's no wrong answer here. In this case, I decided to grab a plug-in hybrid because it has that lower center of gravity due to that big heavy battery down at the bottom. And I've mentioned it, I'll keep saying it, this is the most Miata-like SUV in Mazda's lineup right now. The all-wheel drive is actually rear-wheel biased, so it will push around curves. Hang tight. a super tight turning radius, and it has kinematic posture control, so it'll help keep you feeling planted on every corner. We're not even in sport mode right now, but it does have that in case you want a little bit more performance, and it will just give it to you. Besides that, there's a full EV mode in case you wanna just prioritize not using the gas at all. And this car can charge the battery while you're driving, so when you're coming back from Vegas and it's all downhill, you can get a few more watts in there. So while this is one of the two biggest cars that Mazda offers right now, sharing its shell with the CX-90, it handles like a much smaller car. Actually, like the smallest car, my favorite, the Miata. Paddle shifters, so you can row between the eight real gears in that gearbox. Very minimal body roll on these corners and curves. While you are making those quick getaways, the all-wheel drive keeps you gripped and not making a scene with those squealing tires. I mentioned this is not the inline six, but the inline six is a great option if you don't want to plug in. In this case, you've got the pro of a 56 mile per gallon fuel efficiency and a 490 mile range. So with range like that, you can drive cross country without making too many stops and the car can actually drive on gas alone. So if you don't want to stop to charge, you really don't have to, but it does get top performance when you've got both the battery and the gas tank full. Speaking of driving cross country, if I had to, this would be the car that I'd do it in. Super comfortable, spacious, the infotainment system is huge and it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so you'll see that massive map. And like I mentioned, it just handles like a dream, so it doesn't feel like you had to rent a van to take the family out. 